Hey there, fellow Land Cruiser enthusiasts. I'm cruising the land, and in this video, we're talking about the new 2025 Land Cruiser that's finally coming back to the US market. Now, the picture in the video that, that you clicked on, that image is not the Land Cruiser we're getting here in the US. That's the 300 that everybody else gets. Here in the US, they're reinventing themselves. They had to because they did not sell very many Land Cruisers in the last 10 years, let's say, of the running. So we're gonna get what unfortunately is a GX550. Not that the GX50 is not a nice vehicle. The GX550 is pretty nice. I was like, wow, that's, that's a major improvement. There's one over my shoulder my neighbor has right there. It's a great truck and the 550, holy cow, did they ever do it justice. But that's a midsize SUV and it's gonna be no longer available in a V8, it's gonna be a uh, twin turbo V6. So that's what we're getting. And as you can see behind me, a couple 80 series in front of me, let me just flip the camera around, another 80 series, and up there, another 80 series. I love Land Cruisers, as you can tell, I've got a few. 80 series are my favorite because I think it's the culmination of the best of all worlds, the last of the solid axles. So beautiful. And I put a video out recently talking about the 80 series, or, or rather talking about what the next Land Cruiser is going to be because I got invited to a research, wasn't sure what it was. I was anticipating it was for the Land Cruiser. And I, you know, I asked people to chime in. What what would they want to have in the next Land Cruiser? And overwhelmingly it was make it like the 80, make it solid axle, trim it down, not all the too many bells and whistles, make it an off-roader, make it upgradable. Well, as you can see with the GX uh, 550, it's a big hint of what we're going to get for the Land Cruiser. Uh, they have the uh, overtrail model. So yeah, to go over landing and, you know, you're still talking, you know, body on frame, which is great. And now Land Cruiser, Tundra, Forerunner, Prado, they all share the LX600, they all share the same frame. But here's what I wanna talk about. Where is the Land Cruiser gonna be placed? Because in my book, ever since I fell in love with them, which was early 90s, when I was a kid, Land Cruiser was top dog, right? It was the best of the best, the best that Toyota built over-engineered, just phenomenal, those solid axles in the front. Look at that, that's just beefcake. This is, you know, Overlander and a crawler all in one. And they had it, they had it dialed in. You know, who knows how much profit they made on the 80 series, maybe not much because they put so much into this truck, overbuilt, like I said. That's why these are still on the road today, you know, a good 25 years later and will continue to do so. Um, as you can rebuild that engine every 500,000 miles and it lasts another 500,000 miles. It's just so well built. So back to what we're gonna get. The GX550, so unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you've seen on social media what that GX550 looks like. It's, it's sexy, it's nice. But remember, LX, came out first. So the first time Lexus came out with an SUV, it was with the LX450, which was basically just, you know, the exact same thing as a Land Cruiser, just on the assembly line in 1996, first year it came out. They just said, slap an L badge, make the leather slightly premium and put the lower cladding down here. And then the LX was born. And it's funny, the LX was sold at a bit of a premium the Land Cruiser, after years in the used market, held a higher value. And why? For one reason only. For that reason, the badging. Just the reliability, the reputation of Toyota and the Land Cruiser. So I'm just trying to find my, my Land Cruiser badging on the back here. There we go, because it's a Toyota Land Cruiser behind the, the sleeve rear bumper. So, and then, you know, if you couldn't afford a Land Cruiser and you want a good 4x4 or you want something smaller, you can go for a 4Runner, right? Um, so, a 4Runner, this is where it gets interesting, is based on what? On the Prado 120 frame and body. And so is the GX. So, here in the US, 
we don't talk about Prado. No one really knows. What's a Prado? Well, a Prado is kind of like, call it a European forerunner. That's what they got in Europe. So they, they say that, oh, the, you know, here we say the forerunner and the GX is on the same frame. And that's true because if you talk to a Toyota executive, they would say, or a Lexus executive, they'd say, well, the GX is based on the Prado. You talk to someone at Toyota, they say, yeah, the forerunner is based on the Prado. Well, the new GX 550 is going to be on the same frame as a Prado. And then actually Land Cruiser LX, they kind of, it's, it's the TNGF um, frame, subframe. They're all going to be on that Y because the wheelbase, Toyota figured out the best wheelbase is 112.2 inches. So they are all, whether it's a full size, um, you know, midsize SUV, they're all 112 inches from center to center cap on your wheels. That's why they're all gonna use the same frame. Just maybe some might extend more, might be wider and such. And by the way, that GX550 is bigger than this. It's about 10 inches longer, it's about six inches wider, and it's about two to three inches taller. Um, you know, when you're talk, com comparing stock to stock, obviously this one's lifted, so it's gonna be tall. So it is a midsize. Back in the day, in the 90s, this was a full size right here. This would be your big SUV. This is kind of what got everybody, every other car maker into the game. So the GX is bigger than this. Of course, the 300 series is way bigger than this. But again, the only way you can get anything resembling a 300 series is you'd have to go to Lexus. You'd have to get an LX 600. So back to what what are we identifying so i kind of i say in my title i go the new uh land cruiser is kind of like a forerunner that's identifying itself as a land cruiser so is it a land cruiser truly it's not it's it's i mean toyota says it is they're going to put a badge on it that says it's a land cruiser and they had to lower the price point because at eighty thousand bucks you know ninety thousand bucks those last 200 series nobody was buying them we all love to look at them we all dream to own one but they were not moving of enough metal they were moving about three thousand units a year so what would you do if you were them when they're moving 25 to thirty thousand gx's you know in those same years so they sell way more GXs, sell way more Forerunners. You know, it's a business. Toyota and Lexus is a business. They want to make money. They weren't making money on the Land Cruiser. So we're to blame, you know, here in the US. We just didn't support the brand and didn't buy it. So instead of letting the Land Cruiser nameplate in the US drive off into the sunset, at least Toyota is reinventing themselves. And by reinventing themselves, they got to come up with a product that's going to hold that, that kind of reputation and pedigree, but it's not going to be truly what we always expect the Land Cruiser to be. It's a Prado, which is a forerunner in a GX body and frame, and it's just going to, you know, have a different front end than that GX 550 we've seen recently and a different rear and of course, different interior. And here's kind of an upsetting thing the first few years of the land cruiser is going to be the same engine as the four banger in the tacoma that's right you heard me right it's going to be a 2.4 liter now that 2.4 liter it's the tsa 250 it is capable of 326 horsepower and it's got 465 of torque but it's it's a turbo, you know, so you're pushing those cylinders hard. You know, a V8 in Land Cruisers in the 200 series is not turbo because it's just pure V8 beast power. Uh, obviously, the 80 series was only inline sixes, but that's a big inline six, big engine, robustly built. That's why you can um, pretty much do a complete rebuild three times on that engine block. Now, the GX 550 is coming out with their v the v6 three points um 3.4 liter that's also in the lx um 600 because they're getting away from v8s so i say anybody who's getting a 200 series those are going to hold value or increase because you can't get a v8 land cruiser no mo so pretty crazy things are changing 
the new Land Cruiser, in my eyes, is a forerunner that identifies as a Land Cruiser. Not to say there's anything wrong with forerunners. I got plenty of buddies that have them. They wheel them hard. They they they're awesome. They're a little smaller, and it's you know it's it's a different market. Forerunners are awesome, and excited to see what the new one's going to look like. But on the Land Cruiser, yeah, it's going to look good because that GX 550 looks good. But here's my point. In the hierarchy of Toyota and Lexus, it was always what forerunner, then a GX then a Land Cruiser, and then an LX, price-wise, even though the Land Cruisers will be worth more in the used market. So what happens now? What happens is the 2025 Land Cruiser is going to be less than a GX550. Because why? You know, you think about it, it's no longer an LX600, right? So LX600 is going to demand the highest price out of all of them, of course. And then next up you have the GX550, which is gonna be more appointed than this next Land Cruiser that's coming up. So you're gonna go LX600, GX550, then the Land Cruiser, then the Forerunner. So that's, that's kind of some of the big changes that are coming up here. And maybe, again, I understand from a business point of view that if I were Toyota, yeah, it's all about how many units you can sell. Here's some crazy stats actually to share with you. So the GX came out in 1998, right? So that was the, you had the 100 series with the 4.7, then the GX uh, also with that 4.7. And they sold, believe it or not, about 175,000 in that Gen 1 GX. Then there's been three generations of GX, Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3, which they're yet to make a sale because it's coming out this fall. So they sold 175. During that time, do you know that the LX, they sold a third, 56,000. And the Land Cruiser, they sold 37,000. That's 100 series from 98 to 2001. And that's comparing that, well, the Gen 1, 2002 to 2009. Now, if you look at Gen 2, the GX460, they sold 290,000 of those. During that same timeline, they sold 54,000 LXs and 36,000 Land Cruisers. So, you know, the GX is doing sixfold the LX and it's doing what? That's eight, ninefold almost, uh, eightfold Land Cruisers. So they're gonna obviously spend more time on the GX, right? bigger market more vehicles sold and that means Land Cruiser people well short end of the stick at least they're keeping the model alive right and at least they will be one but make no mistake it's a Prado or it's a glorified forerunner um, that's identifying as a Land Cruiser I think the market on the 80s and the 100s will continue to grow the 80s because well they're older the 100 you know, again, got a V8, you lost the solid front axle. You got a track though. And then of course the, um, the 200 series, which is just, you know, total beast of an engine V8 is going to last a long time. Um, and you just can't get them like that anymore. The other thing to share with you, uh, in, you know, there was a video recently put up by a mechanic who knows these trucks. I know these trucks, but you know, I don't wrench on as many as what a mechanic would do. He was saying the 200 series Land Cruiser is unique. The parts are unique to the Land Cruiser, like the uh, lower and upper control arms in the front. So robust, so beefy. I mean, this is what Tundra and Forerunner guys are putting on their trucks. They, they go for the LC200 uh, front end, right? Because that independent front suspension that comes stock in those vehicles is nowhere near as strong. And this mechanic said, I've never replaced the front, the front end of a 200 series. He goes, it's just the beefiest thing ever. I just bought my wife a Range Rover, which are great vehicles. They go into the shop, they're quirky electronics, but I had to change, it has 80,000 miles. I had to change the lower and upper ball joints, control arms, everything after 80,000 miles versus my LX 550 that I just sold. I owned it since 2008, put 252,000 miles on it and 
never had to replace that. In fact, in that whole ownership, apart from you know spark plugs, tune up, uh, brake pads, tires, and oil changes, the only thing I ever had to do on that on that rig was a radiator. That's it. Two hundreds are built crazy, crazy um, robust. Will the next Prado or the GX five hundred and fifty be the same? Highly doubtful. Still be great trucks, but not built like what they do when they do a Land Cruiser. So here in the US, the best you can do is an LX600. The rest of the world, darn you guys, you still get the 300 series, which is still holding that same standard of the 200 series and you know the MO of Toyota, which is make them the most beefiest things possible, best in the entire market. Nothing compares, nothing comes close. So when you're in your 200 series and you pull up at a light beside another guy in the 2025 Land Cruiser, sure, you can thumbs up, give him a wave, but you don't have equal vehicles. I'll sum it up this way. Let's say in 2026, it's Armageddon, something happened, solar flare, what, what, flash, like there's all, all manufacturing vehicles seizes and desists. There's no more chips. So the market is what it is. And you can't get any more cars from 26 and up and I was offered an 80 series or a brand new 2025 Land Cruiser uh, Prado which would I take and I would tell you all day long I would take this over the 2024 Land Cruiser if that was the case same situation 200 series like I don't know 2013 or 2014 2011 200 series versus a brand new 2025 Land Cruiser aka Prado GX 550 uh, with a four banger I would be taking the 200 series all day long why because at that point it's not about flashy new looks at that point it's about survival getting you from point a to point b you know in a crazy uh only the strong survive scenario that's my opinion um who knows subscribe follow i will be posting as soon as that land cruiser comes out you know i will be posting on it and giving my take i'm a land cruiser guy i've had them all behind me there is under wraps that's green machine in the gray and that is Godzilla in the black. Um, those car covers, by the way, perfect. Fits that, fits that, and it fits any Land Cruiser with a roof rack and gear that needs to be taller. So hit me up. Those are currently 130 bucks, and they're amazing. I had another car cover on Black Mamba over here, and within four months, the California sun disintegrated it. It was like snowflaking, it, like it had dandruff. It was brutal. I had to dump it because I'd cover the car, I protect it from atmospheric dust and bird crap, but I'd have to spend an hour getting all the little dusty things off of it from the car cover. So hit me up if you're interested in those. Those are great car covers. And subscribe. Check out Green Machine. Check out Godzilla. Check out Black Mamba and any new content I'll be putting up. It's all Land Cruisers. And um, so I wanted to give my take. Usually my take is super extra positive on land cruisers right because i'm a land cruiser guy but this 2025 I, on one hand i'm excited to see it on the other hand i'm preemptively disappointed because <laughs> i'm a four banger what is this a prius slash land cruiser i don't know hopefully by year two they're already putting in that v6 twin turbo at least at least um but we'll see I'm sure it'll have a bunch of creature comforts inside, but what good is that going to be when you're already broken down on mile one of a trail? And one of these guys is going to have to come back and save your ass. So, all right. Well, stay tuned. Subscribe. Like if you like my video. Uh, and, uh, well, happy trails. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.